Hello and welcome back. Uh, it's been a minute, right? But we're going to do another quick video. This is a Proxmox tutorial, how to install YouTube DLP web UI. YouTube DLP is an open source software that allows you to download most videos from most of the popular websites on the internet. You got a Facebook video you want to download YouTube DLP. You got an Instagram video you want to download YouTube DLP. You got a YouTube video you want to download, YouTube DLP, same thing for Instagram. And I've been using this for a couple days now, about a week or two, and I really like it. So I thought I'd share it with you. Again, this is a quick one. Why would you want to install YouTube DLP Web UI? Well, it's easier for me to show you rather than tell you. Behind me, we have YouTube DLP, and we should just be able to log in with pre-configured settings here. If I can remember my password, there we go. And with that, we're logged in. And the cool thing about YouTube DLP is you can actually use it. Go to YouTube, for example, get the link of a video. Instead of going to one of those sketchy websites that make you watch an advertisement, you can spin up your own server, click the plus sign for a new download, enter the YouTube video URL, choose the default parameter, and then hit start. And you'll notice it starts downloading that YouTube video for you automatically. So let's give it a few minutes for it to do its thing. You can see the download speed will happen at the same rate of your internet speed. So we're going to let this download out. So as you can see, the download is making some progress here and demo's done. But the cool thing about YouTube DL Web UI is that you can use it to either download a full video or an MP3. But once it's downloaded, it stores the file to your server or wherever you spun this up on. And then you can click inside of the file and now it's completed. So we have two options here. We can either play the video directly as a file, or we can download it to our local machine. And you can see we then get a pretty quick download. That's YouTube DLP Web UI and why you should download it. Seems like a pretty useful tool, right? Actually getting it installed is very simple too. Let's hop over to our Proxmox environment. We're logged into Proxmox here. And what we can do is spin up a container. I'm going to do this from the beginning. I'm going to spin this up from the beginning in order to get YouTube DLP installed. You will need Docker, right? We're also going to be running this inside of a container just for ease of use and management. So let's spin up a quick container here. We'll call this 5001 YouTube DLP example. Give this a password. We're spinning this up on a Linux container just for ease of management and use. And when I say ease of management, containers and Proxmox allow you to basically have a web-based terminal on the container console versus like VLC or however Proxmox forwards its console to the web interface. Because you have basically an actual terminal, it makes copy and pasting commands a lot easier. It also makes actually managing the virtual machine or container itself a lot easier too because you can just do it from the proxmox web interface you don't have to ssh or set up a jump box or anything like that i'm going to store this locally and we'll give this 64 gigs of storage we'll give this i'd say give it at least two cores so that would be four threads assuming you have two threads per core we'll give this two gigs of ram and two gigs of swap the network is our standard set it to dhcp DNS is whatever DNS server you use. In my case, I do my Active Directory server and my local domain. I then confirm and finish. We then let this spin up. Because this is a fresh container, we're gonna do some basic updates and upgrades. We're then gonna get Docker installed, and then we're gonna install YouTube DL. We need Docker. I know what you're saying. Mr. Low Spec, you're running containers on a container. Yes, but I'm running two different types of containers, okay? There is the operating system level container, which are LXC containers. And then there's the application slash dev environment container, which is Docker. We're doing containerception here. The reason we're installing a container inside of a container is one, the performance hit should be very minimal, right? Docker doesn't really use that much resources and LXC doesn't use that much resources. So you should be saving some resource usage just off the bat based on the technologies. And then on top of that, it also makes managing this a whole lot easier too. It's a win-win there. Go ahead and log into your container. After that, you'll want to install some utilities. But first do an update and an upgrade. After that, we do an app get update dash Y and an app get up 
upgrade dash Y and we're done. After the updates are completed, you can then install Docker and Docker Compose. Installing Docker and Docker Compose is very straightforward, but we're gonna need some required tool first. So first we do an apt install dash Y, CA certificates, curl, GNUPG, wget, and as well as get, and we let that run. We're then gonna have to set up Docker's app repository. First, we have to make a keyring file. Do that with sudo install. That was sudo install dash m0755 sd at c apt keyrings, apt keyrings. And then we point it to the Docker key hosted by doc.com. And I'm gonna paste these in the bottom of the video so you can just copy paste them. We then change the permissions on that keyring file. And then we add the Docker repo to our repository. Then we run an update one more time. After that, we should then be able to install the Docker images. You can do that with an app get install. And you'll see we have Docker CE, Docker CE CLI. Docker should now be installed, but we also want to install Docker Compose. So we do an app get install dash y docker compose and we let that run after that we're going to turn docker into a service and then we go with now enable docker so the next step is we have to go to the youtube dl web ui github page so let's do that let's go to google youtube dlp web ui and there's a few different versions of this but the correct version is by marco pavanelli or pavanello and if you read through this, he gives you some hints and tricks for setting this up for yourself. He even gives us a Docker Compose. So here's what you wanna do. You're gonna make a directory called U2DL. Inside of that directory, we're gonna make two folders. I'm gonna create one called U2DL slash downloads and U2DL slash config. Cool. Then we wanna create a new file called docker compose.yaml right here. Then what we want to do is copy this docker compose file from his GitHub over to our Proxmox session. After that, we can get this spun up. In our case, the folder we're going to use is YouTube DL slash downloads. And what this does is it maps that YouTube DL downloads folder we just made to the downloads folder inside of the VM. We're also going to map our config if you scroll through this, he quickly tells you that you can do a config variable. So we'll hop back over here. I'll do a slash YouTube DL slash config and map that to config inside of the container. And then what we can do is close this out. But we're not done yet. Now we have to make a config file for YouTube DL Web UI. Again, we can use his GitHub as a reference. So we can do a nano slash YouTube DL config config.yaml. Because looking at his GitHub page, he says right here that YouTube DL relies on a config.yaml file stored under the slash config volume, right? Meaning we just have to create that file inside of there and then let Docker handle the bind mounts. So you copy this file, you go back here, you complete that nano command you paste and the reason you want to use the config instead of just using the docker command is because it lets you set a username and password so our username is going to be test user our password is going to be password one two three and then our port is just going to be 30 33 and then we can close this one out now if we were to do an ls slash youtube do star you can see we have our config in our downloads folder right here now if we were to do a ls our local folder you'll see our docker compose and if we were to cat out that docker compose you'll see everything should be set up properly now we clear our screen and what we can then do is a docker compose up and just give it a few minutes before we do the docker compose let's get the ip to see what ip this server is running on it is 1152 right here we can clear this out and then the next thing we can do is a docker compose up and we just let this run we'll just give this a few minutes for it to 
configure itself and spin up. This is the cool thing about Docker and Linux containers is that you can basically get a server run up in just a few minutes and start using it or testing it just to see how it works. You know, it's a fun learning tool. So, so now if we were to go to the IP of our newly spun up server, so 192.168.1152.3033. And there we go. We now have YouTube DLP web UI up and running. So again, very useful tool, right? We've already kind of shown how it works. You can kind of, we can play around with a little bit. Let's throw another YouTube link in there. Let's grab one from YouTube real quick. Let's do YouTube. Hi, welcome, welcome back, back to Joe Blogs. Blogs. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about what's happening. So let's copy that YouTube link. Let's go back to YouTube DLP. Let's click this and then new download. I'm going to do a download for that video we just posted You hit start and just give it a few minutes for it to download. And once again, we then have the option to either play it directly ah, in the new to tab inside of our browser. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about. Or we can download the file locally from our server to our local machine. And when you click download, it pops up with you'll then be presented with this screen where you can just go ahead and hit save. And then there you go. And then there you go. You now have the video downloaded. So pretty straightforward. That's how you get YouTube DL web UI installed. And that's how you use it. And that's useful because it doesn't just download a single video. It can download entire playlists or you can feed it a list of videos. There's lots of different stuff you can do with it, but that's it for now. Thank you for watching.